So in this part, we are going to discuss uh, image filtering. So let us start uh, by discussing what exactly we, we mean by uh, term filtering uh, in our day-to-day -day life. So when we say that uh, we want to filter something, what uh, we exactly want to do. So sometimes, let's say we have some material where there are some impurities, and you want to remove those imp impurities. So we just use some filter and then uh, try to, uh, I mean, stop the uh, unwanted things from the material. And then why we only allow to pass the the things that we want to, uh, or we want in the in the final material. Okay. So uh, sometimes we do filtering for this purpose. Uh, and sometimes, uh, so in this case, uh, we are assuming that the material is uh, have, have some dirt or some impurities and we want to remove those impurities. But sometimes uh, your material may not be uh, impure, but uh, I mean, everything that, that you have in the material that is good, but uh, you want to segregate things or like you want to only filter out some wanted things and you want to stop uh, see the un unwanted things. So for both these applications, we make use of filter. Okay. So in, in summary, in, in our day-to-day -day life, uh, filter is actually used to, from your material, filter is used to, uh, I mean, uh, uh, allow some wanted material to pass through the filter uh, and uh, stop something which we don't want in the output. Okay. So exactly the same thing uh, we actually try to do in case of images. In images also, let's say we have some uh, something unwanted in the image or we have something which is undesirable and we want to remove that. Okay? So for that purpose, in case of images, we use filtering. Okay? Now, when we are removing unwanted signal from the image, this may be done to enhance the image or it may be done to modify the image. In case of enhancement, it is clear why we want to do enhancement in the image because there's something in the image which we don't want. But sometimes we uh, also uh, try to modify the image, like whatever present form the image has, we don't want to use the image in the present form and we want to modify it. So for that purpose also, we will see that uh, we will be using uh, image filtering. Okay. So let us see this with the help of uh, this example. For example, in this image, you have pixels which are noisy. Right? A lot of noise you can see in the image. We remove it, we will, we will uh, try to remove it by uh, performing the image filtering operation. Right? What operation we'll perform, we'll see later. But uh, in this case, uh, we are we are, our input to the filtering uh, or to our filter is this image. And when this image comes out of the filter, then it becomes a clean image. So here, the objective uh, of performing image filtering is to remove the noise from the image. Similarly, in this case, uh, yeah, let, let us say we have this input image. In this case, we find that this input image is uh, having uh, issues with respect to contrast, like whatever objects you have here, they're not very clearly visible and you want to enhance them, you want to improve the contrast of the image. So again, this can be done by performing uh, a filtering operation where uh, through filter, we want to uh, remove the unwanted signal uh, or unwanted characteristics from the image and want to enhance the image uh, like this, as you see in the, in the output. Okay, so in both the cases, in both these examples, uh, there were some uh, problems with the images and through filtering, we want to suppress those problems and we want to get the clean image. Uh, there's another example again here where uh, you have similar kind of uh, problem in this input image also has the problem of uh, poor contrast and you want to enhance the, uh, enhance the image with respect to contrast so that whatever objects you have in the image, they are clearly visible. Okay. So in this case also, in this example also, uh, the, pro the, the image has some problems, some issues, and we want to uh, overcome, we, we, we want to overcome uh, through that. So we are using the process of filtering. Now in the last example, in this case, uh, in uh, uh, intrusion, there's, not, there's no problem in the image. I mean, maybe uh, you can consider that this image is a, a good quality image. It doesn't have problem of noise or contrast or any uh, illumination or anything. But what we want, we don't want uh, to process the image like this. We want to modify this image and we want to just highlight the, the edges or the lines that, uh, that we have in the image. And we want to use those lines uh, when we are performing the 
operation on the image or when we are going to use this image for certain application. So all the three examples that we have seen here, this one or this one or this one, in all these examples, we are actually using filtering operation to uh, uh, improve the quality of the image. But in the last operation, we are actually modifying the image so that uh, the modified uh, representation of the image becomes uh, suitable to what we uh, want to consider for our application. Okay. So for both the cases, for both the things, we make, make use of filtering operation. So in the in, in, in the case of filtering, we'll find that we actually we will be forming a new new image. How will we form this new image? We will we'll get this new image from the old image by applying a filter. Right? What exactly we mean by filter or how we design filter or how, uh, uh, how our filter looks like here. Uh, we'll see uh, a little later, but uh, at this moment, you can just understand that uh, in this whole process of filtering, we are going to get a new image from the original image. And this new image is going to be generated with the help of the filter that we are going to uh, use here. And uh, you can think that this is going to be an going to be an operation. Filter is going to be some kind of operation that we are going to perform on the image to get the new image. And uh, this term uh, uh, that we are using here for filtering, uh, this is basically coming from the frequency domain because uh, in the frequency domain, like everything you know that can be represented in in terms of uh, frequencies. Uh, so all the image characteristics that you have in your image can be represented using some high frequencies or low low frequencies or some mid range uh, mid range frequencies. So there, uh, when we are, we, we'll also talk about filtering in the uh, frequency domain. So there we'll see that we can very straightforward uh, in a very straightforward way. We can define this operation of filtering where we can say that we are filtering the high frequencies or we are filtering the low frequencies or we are allowing, uh, we are doing band, band fast filtering or we are doing uh, band suppressed filtering and so on. So this term filtering is actually borrowed from the frequency domain and we are using the same term uh, to define this kind of operations uh, in the in the special domain. Okay, so as I just said uh, that uh, uh, right now we were discussing the uh, image filtering in the special domain, but it can be also uh, defined uh, in frequency domain. So if we have to do filtering on our images, there are two options. We can do the filtering in the spatial domain or we can take our image to the frequency domain and we can do the filtering there. If you are directly doing the, uh, if you are doing filter, filtering directly on the input images uh, or our original images in the spatial domain, then directly you can perform whatever operation or whatever filter you want to, perf uh, you want to apply, you cannot directly apply on the uh, image that is given to you and you will get a new image. If you want to do this in the frequency domain, then obviously you, you have to first apply the Fourier transform and uh, you have to get the uh, Fourier transform of the input image. And then in the transform domain, you have to perform the uh, filtering operation and then you have to perform the reverse uh, or inverse Fourier transform to get the original image back. So now let us first discuss uh, filtering in, in the spatial domain, and then we'll talk about it uh, in, in the frequency domain. So in a spatial domain, uh, as I just said, that uh, when we are going to do filtering, we are going to get a new image. So uh, whatever we have, whatever size we have uh, for input, the same size we are going to maintain uh, for the output image. So if you have n cross n image here as input, in the output also, uh, I mean, normally we'll get the same uh, same size image, but what will what will change uh, in the image? The values are the, the intensities that you are going to have for these pixels. So you are going to get, when you are doing the filtering, you are going to get new kind of intensities, new set of intensities for, for your image. So that way you, you can say that your image has been modified. Whatever uh, intensities you have here, you had here, they have been changed to new intensities. Now, when we are changing the intensities for the image, for any given image, there are two ways of uh, changing in the intensities. Uh, and obviously, one more thing, let me just uh, first tell you that when you are moving from this to this image to this image, you are going to change the intensity of each and every pixel that you have here. So now, when you are going to change the intensity of a particular pixel uh, to define it's a new intensity, there are two ways. One to get the new intensity, you just 
use the intensity of the that pixel alone and then do some kind of uh, processing and get the new intensity this 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 kind of methods are called point press processing methods where the intensity is considered only uh, to get the new intensity for a particular pixel the intensity of that particular point or that particular pixel is considered in the another set of uh, uh, filtering methods uh, to get the new intensity for a particular image uh, sorry for a, for a particular pixel we don't just consider the intensity of that particular pixel but we also consider the intensity from the neighborhood or or we can say we can, we consider the intensities of the pixels which are in the neighborhood okay so when we uh, to generate the new image from the original given image if we just consider the intensity of uh, that particular pixel where we want to get the new intensity uh, then these methods are called point processing methods and if we consider Uh, an area around the pixel, and then to generate the new values, we consider the intensities of all the ne I mean, neighboring pixels. Then those methods are called area or mask processing methods. Okay. Uh, so in case of point processing method, what we have to define, we just need to define what is the transformation that we are going to do do on the original intensity. So if, if if let's say this pixel has a particular intensity, now to get the new intensity, what kind of transformation, what kind of operation we want to perform on that, we just need to define that. And if that is defined, then with the help of that, uh, if you have input gray levels, uh, by using the uh, this transformation, you can find out what should be the new gray level in the output image. This is simple. Uh, so for the point processing methods, what you have to define is just this function. Function t. Okay. Let us see some examples of the point processing methods. Uh, one is, uh, let's say you want to compute the negative of the uh, negative of a uh, negative of a given image. So what you have to, uh, how can you do that? Negative of any uh, of any given image can be obtained by just subtracting the intensities to 255, assuming that your values are in the range of 0 to 255. So what is your transformation function? Transformation function can be simply defined by uh, by this. Uh, line where let's say your this range is in this particular uh, in generally let us say, uh, say that we are defining the range from zero to l minus one and uh, this side and zero to l minus one this side these are the coordinates uh, oh sorry uh, I'm sorry not the coordinate uh, the gray labels so you have l different gray labels to make this image uh, and uh, this is the input side where you are passing the uh passing different gray levels and with the help of this function we are getting the new uh, new gray level so for example for a particular gray level this one what is the output is going to be defined uh, what, what is the output you are going to get this value right? how you are going to obtain this value just by knowing the uh, this function uh, this transformation function okay uh similarly for let's say we want to do the contrast stretching uh, uh, contrast uh, stretching uh, in this case let us say uh, for a particular band of values let's say from from this intensity to this intensity you want to just highlight you want to make them more and for other, all other values that you have uh, all other intensities you are just want to uh, retain them as it is so you can define a function like this as you have here and uh, uh, whenever in your function If a, a value that you are passing, the intensity value that you are passing is uh, falling on this part, this line, or the other line that you have here, then you will get the same same value, uh, uh, same value uh, as output. Uh, but if your input uh, gray value is lying here, then you are going to get the new transformed value with the help of this signal. Why I am saying that in the in, in when your input is lying on this. Line you are going to get the same value because this actually defines a kind of y equal to x line, where whatever input you are giving, you are going to get the same same output. Okay. Similarly, in this particular case, actually this is going to be uh, a function uh, or a line which is um, you can say a kind of y equal to l minus one minus x. Okay. So for any given intensity, you are just subtracting it to uh, l minus one, and then you get the new value. Uh, in case of thresholding, let's say you want to perform. A, so, uh, so please, uh, I mean, understand that these both the operations are 
point based operations because here to get the intensity of a particular pixel in the new image you just need to know the intensity of that particular pixel not the intensity of uh, any other pixel similarly in the case of contrast stretching also for any pixel whatever intensity it has uh, its new intensity is obtained based on the old intensity that it has okay so you don't need to know the neighborhood similarly in the case of thresholding let's say this another application where you can use point based me method in the case of thresholding let's say we say that uh, any intensity which is like say lying between uh, th this point to this point they are passed in your output image but all other intensities are made zero so in this side your input you have input intensities on this side you have the output intensities so for all the in input intensities which are lying here or here the output is zero but when your intensities are lying in this range then you have 255 so uh, from from this given image wherever the intensities are in this range the, in the output you are going to have maximum 255 values otherwise you are going to have zero value right similarly there is a uh, there's, there's an operation called histogram equalization we will see this in detail this is also a point based operation uh, where to get the new image new intensity for the uh, uh, for your for a particular pixel you just need to know its old value uh, there are two, uh, so in case of uh, point processing methods, you just need to know what is the transformation that you are going to use to transform the intensities. But in case of, uh, so you can say you need to know the transformation or you need to know the operation that you are going to perform uh, on the pixel intensities. But in case of uh, area or mask based processing, we need to know actually two things. One, what is the area? Uh, uh, how much area or what is the size of the area that you are consider going to consider and another is the operation that we are going to perform uh, with respect to the pixels that we are considering from the from the neighborhood so in this case there are two things required not only the operation that you are going to perform is required we also need to find need to define what kind of area we are going to consider around the pixel okay so there are two things that we need to we need to define when we are doing area or mask based processing okay so uh, let us uh, stop at this moment. Uh, in the next class, we'll discuss more about uh, this.